with the roll call. Oh, pledge first. I'm sorry. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Some leaders throughout the Black Hills started a process called Frontiers Forging Our Future. 
and they met with people up and down the whole Black Hills region, talking about what they wanted to have in their communities. Uh, after that, a few years after that, we started this Black Hill Vision about 10 years ago now. And we did the same thing, basically went up and down the, the Black Hills. And what um, do we want to have as we look forward for our kids, for our businesses to grow, where people can have jobs so that hopefully our kids can stick around? And how do we fund these things, and how do we find the leadership that we need to move these things forward? And what we find is that uh, economic development is, is resource hungry. It takes money to do it, it takes the right people to do it, and it takes some time to do it. It doesn't just happen overnight. So a couple of years ago, excuse me, it, um, it, we went through a process with Black Hills Vision that really wasn't as successful as we wanted it to be. And uh, I decided that it would be a good thing. I think it's too good to not bring it back to life, if you will, and go forward in a very positive manner. The information that I gave to uh, Harley and passed out to you has a lot of the information in it that talks about the actual data. But the information I just passed out now gives a lot of background on what's actually happened over the years. You'll notice on here that a couple of years ago now, there were some town hall meetings that were uh, uh, conducted in 11 different communities throughout our region. There were over 400 participants, and they talked about what they were looking, what they felt would be the the future of, of our region, our Black Hills region, and how we can work together as a big team to, to uh, affect that, that, to, that out, an outcome that was what we might like. And you take a look at the, the second sheet there, it talks about the role, talks about the common threats between our communities, and these are all things that are, I think we would all agree with, and I took the time to look at them. The third page talks about the money that we were hoping to uh, invest in our through Black Hills Vision in our various communities. And you'll notice down through here that uh, we have um, we have some what we call initiatives on the, in the bottom of the third page where we talk about Rushmore Region Marketing. And this is a, a new program that's just gotten started about a year ago. And, essentially, and essentially what it boils down to is that you folks here in Hot Springs and throughout Fall River County are being represented. You have been by Cindy Turner, now you'll be represented by Amanda. And that there are four other people throughout the region that are working on this. And the idea is this. Um, there are numerous companies around the United States that decide from time to time to relocate, expand, <coughs> and something different. Well, how do, how do you here in Hot Springs come to know about them? Well, it's, it's a difficult time consuming process, but there are ways to do that. And this particular Rushmore region, what they intend to do is establish relationships where they can call people up and say, hey, this is Joe from Black Hills, Rushmore, uh, Mount Rushmore. We'd like to talk to you about your, your plans for your company in the future. And from that, those connections, we will eventually start, over a period of time, having some successes that will benefit, benefit Hot Springs, the Fall River County, all up and down the Black Hills. So what we're looking at right now is a, a big team approach. It's the sport page looks at how the uh, organization was set up and talks about the different investment levels that uh, we were looking at. If you take a look at the, uh, the next piece that we handed out, these are what we call the current commitments. I wanted to talk about this a little bit. You know, 10 years ago we had a real uh, problem with what called the BRAC, Base Realignment and Closure Commission, and our air base that represents about $340 million a year and, and direct and indirect uh, to our economy <coughs> was on the list to be closed. And so the Ellsworth Task Force at that time received some money from Black Hills Vision. We raised some more money, but we went out and spent about a, a million dollars to save that. And what, what you figure out is, if for the million dollars you spent, you got that back in one day because you're about 340 million a year to the, to the area. This Rushmore region is what I just talked about. This is an exciting uh, adventure because, quite frankly, we don't know what we don't know. And how do you find out if you don't spend some time and find some people that are willing to lead the charge? Mayor, you and I were talking about the fact that implementation is always the key. Who's going to do it? We can talk about good ideas and we can say, well, we can come up with some money, but who's actually going to do it that has some expertise? And what we find is in Rushmore Region, we do have that expertise. A couple of other things in here this, this set up is this theoretical underground physics. People from all over the world have come to attend this thing. Uh, we're, we're spreading the word. Some of them come down and see the, the, the different things that you have down here. I think that, uh, of course, the Plain Alliance, you know, right now you've got a four lane out here what was called Heartland Express, and this ports the plane will hook up the Teddy Roosevelt Highway with the 
uh, Canadian Highway. And that's just going to benefit us as well to have more traffic coming through here. Even though you're three, four miles off the uh, 79, people still uh, will, will come in here from time to time. Black Hills Air Service Task Force, uh, partnership rather. When we put this together 10 years ago, we invested $500,000. <coughs> we have airlines today that are here because we marketed our community, we uh, marketed the seats to people, we worked on pricing. And right now, this application will hopefully end up with a direct flight from Rapid City to Atlanta on a daily basis so people can really go anywhere in the world from there. So what we're looking at, if you take a look at the very last page, this is kind of the history of the cities and the counties and what people have kind of given in the past or invested, I should say. I hate to use that word given, but this is really an investment. Um, and what we're, what we're asking the, the city of Hot Springs to consider would be joining this to the tune of about $5,000 a year. You can see by the report that I've given you that you fit in, in the, in the based upon your size. I think you're right where you should be uh, based upon some of the bigger communities and what they're actually giving. There's that word again. Um, investing. So my, my intention tonight was to give you some background on Black Hills Vision, show you that there are direct benefits to indirect and indirect benefits to Hot Springs through the efforts of the Shedco, through the efforts of people like myself who are going to be up and down the hills, the Governor's Office of Economic Development. It's a big, big team effort. Uh, but again, it takes money to do this. And my hope is that the city of Hot Springs can take a look at joining this with, uh, with a few dollars. Um, my hope is to be able, over a period of time, to raise between six and seven hundred thousand dollars a year that we can use to fund various projects. Now, you all know the trauma that Hot Springs is going through right now with the VA. And we all know that there are always opportunities out there, we would guess. So how do we go about supporting the VA and yet supporting other opportunities that may come along no matter what happens to the VA? And that's what Rushmore Region is about. The air base, air, air transportation, uh, rail, everything else is going to be part of it. So I, I've rambled on a little bit, try to be a, a little bit quick about this. Do you have some questions for me? I noticed on the uh, uh, round two that you have uh, energy, extraction, and industry. How much of this money is going to be dedicated to uh, if we do decide to do this 5000 a year? How much of this money is going to be dedicated to uh, the industry going in over in Edgemont, which is uranium mining? Well, two comments about that. Good question. First of all, I won't make these decisions. This will be a board of directors' decision that would make any decision. But supporting a specific industry like that is not what this is intended to do. This money is, it's, I can could, I, I could say that, in my opinion, there will be no money spent on trying to defeat it or approve how it be. I don't, that's not what this money is intended to do. So I, I, to answer your question directly, <coughs> in my opinion, none of this money will be spent on how it Well, I would say, as far as I'm concerned, if the motion were to be made to advance this money to vision, there would be a caveat to it that no money from Hot Springs, from the public, and the taxpayers be spent on uh, industry in Edgemont, uranium mining. And there again, you also have the oil mining, and a lot, a lot of information has come out about fracking. And I used to work for the Department of Energy. In fact, I was one of their, their teachers of uh, oil audits in Denver, Colorado. And I learned a lot about fracking. And I really don't believe that fracking is good for this earth. You're breaking it up, trying to extract something, 
that should flow easily. And I don't believe in fracking either. Well, the good thing about it is that I've talked to the Department of Energy and Natural Resources, Environment and Natural Resources, on that very issue. And because uh, we were at the legislature, we were debating whether we should have some sort of guidelines or rules relating to fracking. And what we were told is that the soils or the subsurface material, that, whatever you want to call it, is not conducive to fracking. So, in their opinion, the, the state of South Dakota is never going to do fracking because it wouldn't help what's already going on there. That's what they told me. And I, I what would I know? I, I, I assume that they're telling me the truth. So I don't think that any money, well, number one, that's not what we would use this money for. If we were going to do anything, it would be some sort of a grant, let's just say, by the city of Buffalo. And they said, look, we've got some, some things coming in, but we need to know how we can hire somebody. So this is an example. Um, uh, develop some sort of an oversight, or I mean a plan for how we could take care of more houses or improve some of our services that we might have. So it would be something to be outside of the uh, normal day-to-day uh, -day expenses of a city or a business or some sort of a nonprofit. And typically, this money is not going to be spent on business. It's going to be spent on something like the, uh, the Shedco or something like uh, something else that would be similar to that in other areas. Um, organizations that are about bringing people in and, and improving our economy rather than trying to, we're not going to support a business or a community or any kind of fracking, drilling, or anything like that. We haven't over the years, and I don't, there's nobody on, on this group that's going to make this decision that has any interest in, in moving in that direction. Well, the city of Hot Springs has already issued a letter that we are not in favor of uh, the uranium mining in Edmond. And I also understand that we've been approached by Shedco <coughs> to uh, pay them $25,000 out of our budget for 2015. And if that should go as is planned, that caveat would follow them too. That we in Hot Springs do not want our taxpayer dollars spent on uranium mining. Well, and I have no quarrel with that at all. I, I have no That's my opinion. Yeah, right. Yeah. Um, and again, I, I can't speak for Genco, but uh, we do intend, as a fact, as vision to work very closely with them, just as we will through the other organizations up and down the Black Hills. Um, but we don't tell them what to do. We basically wait for some sort of a request. And frankly, I know that they're, they're working on other ideas for the benefit of Hot Springs and Fall River County that uh, are way um, away they're, they're, no, they're nowhere near what your concerns are they're about businesses that could come here that would be good for the community that's what their job is my job is not to do their job my job is to hope to come up with money from everybody throughout the region think about it guys if i can raise six eight hundred thousand dollars a year and i'm asking you for five thousand dollars and you come to black hills vision along the way and say look we need to do something to bring somebody in to do something with the hot water or do something with, perhaps, God forbid, the VA structures we have up there, something like that. Well, let's just say that you came up with one of the hundred thousand dollars to do that. That's what you come to me about, because I want to raise this money so I can help you, and Buffalo, and Belfouche, and Sturgis, and Spirit, and everybody else. And well, you know what? Rapid City benefits from all of them. I'm not here to support Rapid City. They benefit anyway. You're the ones. And so I'm saying, look for you know. I hate to say that. But for measly five thousand dollars, you're you're buying into something that is really big and going, and it's got a, a track record of doing good in the past. So, but the things that you're concerned about are good, solid issues, no doubt about it. But that's not what Black Hills Vision is about. Those types of things. Are there any other questions? We have our public hearing, so we'll sorry guys. I'm trying to cut you short. If there's another question. Well, if not, thank you very much for your attention and attention. Uh, Mayor knows where to catch me. Harley knows for sure. A couple other people in here know me pretty well as well. So thank you, folks. Um, as you can see, I have a little bit of passion about this. I've seen what can happen. I would really like to have 
Hot Springs being part of that team. So thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. All right, it's a little after 7.15, but uh, we're going to move forward and open up the public hearing on the planning and zoning ordinance changes. The first one is the um, amending of Chapter 27-A zoning ordinance relating to the permitted uses and front and rear setback requirements of mixed use zoning districts. Are we talking about our issue, or are we going down? No, I'm sorry. We we had a seven. Oh, sorry, a little confusing for you. If you're following the agenda, oh, um, we had a 715 uh, public hearing plan, I and so I had to jump forward. Are you still on public hearing? Public um, comment. Yeah. <coughs> Because no, no. we're under the hearing right now, and the only subject up for discussion is any comments concerning the amendment to the ordinance for rear and setback, front and rear setbacks for mixed use district uh, zone property. Is the only comments right now. We'll get back to the public yeah. comments. Yeah, sorry. Um, we had that scheduled at 7:15, so we have to follow that for the agenda. So are there any comments? Um, and I'm kind of new at this process, but if there's no uh, comments... Planning and Zoning have a recommendation on this, Scott? It's a due pass recommendation to, uh, to approve this ordinance. Uh, changing the setbacks and, and adding as a permitted use. Um, that's not right in front of me, but I believe retail. That's in the mixed use yeah, district. Yeah, but there was a question is because <coughs> there are a few properties that we did approve that issues with the back and we need to be so that's the opportunity to have it at Yes, and that was up on University Avenue. Mm -hmm. There are no further comments. Ms. Mayor, you can move to the second item under the hearing. All right. The second item is an ordinance changing the highway service zoning de designation and residential zoning designation along Indianapolis Avenue which is also Highway 18 bypass between South 6th Street and South 9th Street to a mixed-use designation. In, in your board packets, under the ordinances <coughs> that are a little later in your board packet, have the maps attached, you know, if you decide to approve this after the hearings are closed, uh, those maps are attached further into your packet for that area showing which lots would, would be changed. Is there anything you want to add, Scott? Or? I can uh, just add a little bit of discussion. What this area is, is uh, from Pro Bill over to Lockhart's Trailer Court, half a block in, more or less, on either side of Indianapolis <coughs> Avenue. On the, <coughs> excuse me, on the north side, it was zone residential B. And on the south side, there's zone highway service. There was a lot of houses in highway service, <coughs> excuse me again, that are non-compliant uses. We're finding the same thing there that we found on University Avenue when it was highway service there, and we changed that to mixed use. That with these homes being non-compliant, when it goes to uh, when they when they go to sell the whole homes, sometimes there's a little bit of an issue because they're not zoned correctly. And by turning this into a mixed-use district, it does the same thing with the, the businesses and the homes along Indianapolis Avenue right there as it did in University Avenue, which basically makes everything compliant. So that's, uh, that was a positive thing. This was uh, initiated by the Planning and Zoning Commission uh, to, uh, to try to straighten this, this out for the people. Okay. Thanks. I just have a question. If this is like the third time we've done this, how come it was never caught before that all this was in violation? That's the wrong one. That's not what we're talking about. There. That's the one. And this is also about the second or third go-around on this parcel here, too, isn't it? No. Yeah. No, this hasn't been touched. I think the one you're referring to, Wes, is the one on probably we did 
the other direction going north. This one is going west. Is there any facing right out of here, both sides? Yes. But this one that we're talking about is going around. It's going west. Up the bypass. Past Motel 6, up that way. This is a public hearing, Ms. Mayor, so if there's any comments from the public. All right, we'll go to the third ordinance. An ordinance changing the general commercial zoning designation and residential A zoning designation along Manicotta Avenue between North River Northwest River Street and Spring Avenue to a mixed-use designation and changing certain lots in Villa Teresa addition from general commercial to residential A designation affecting the following legal descriptions. And again, there's a map in your board packet that shows which lots are affected. It's part of the ordinance later on in your packet. This is another action that was taken by the Planning Commission. And when you look at the when you look at your maps, you'll notice a large area as being rezoned from general commercial to residential A. And that is Adam Heath's property um, and the Jensen property up in uh, in Evans, not Evans Heights, Villa Teresa. And that was zoned commercial some time ago when somebody was going to put a nightclub or something up in there. And that does not work with today's fire standards. And uh, in talking with Adam Heath, he agreed to be involved in this and go ahead and zone this correctly because his is also would be zoned incorrectly as a general commercial use because his is residential, which this also fixes that, uh, that zoning for them. So again, this is, uh, this is positive. We had a public hearing on both of these issues. Uh, with the Planning and Zoning Commission, it was legally advertised. Um, we did have people show up, the public you know, that was affected and interested showed up. And so uh, the people were heard and it was decided to go forward. Again, recommendations from the Planning Commission to pass. I did attend that too. Any, any further comments or concerns, questions? Okay, then I believe I can close the hearing. That's correct. So the public hearing is now closed, and we are going back to the communications from the public. The Corey J. Moore, Scott Bill item.
if the city council does want us to continue and demolish all the buildings on our property that they've mentioned, I would like all the buildings in Hot Springs to be assessed for the same building to land ratio or building to plot ratio, whatever you want to call it, so that it's unilateral across the city and we're not being singled out. The setting of fire hazards is normally the duty of the fire marshal. I realize that we don't have a full-time fire department, and I don't know if that duty does fall underneath Scott's position. I'm sorry. No. I don't know your qualifications. Assuming the building inspector is correctly, um, correct and the setbacks are designed to provide better access between building structures during the fire, the entire downtown hot springs, including the city offices, would be considered non-compliant as well. Any structure such as a condo or an apartment would fall under the same effect. Um, I'm a little nervous because I don't usually talk in front of people. So our back porch structure, we did. Uh, we came down to City Hall uh, before we did any improvements to the, to the structure. It is pre-existing. There was a <coughs> there when we bought our property. Some of the um, the handrails and stuff were a little wobbly, so we decided we were going to improve it. So we went down to City Hall and we asked them if we needed to have a building permit. The, the porch, back porch area is under is 90 square feet. It falls under the 200 square foot guidelines. And since we were improving an existing structure, we were told we did not need to have a building permit. So we didn't get one. If you guys do want us to move that, we can. I understand it would be it would be a little bit difficult for us to do that considering we have to take the whole thing apart. And our back door is right there on the property line, so we wouldn't be able to move it five feet over, which is I understand what the new rate place and regulations are. Um, I do believe that this letter from the building inspector borders on harassment. And I think that the ordinance that we were uh, accused of need to be enforced unilaterally across the entire city. And that's my feeling. I would like all of this to be dismissed because I don't feel that it's justified. It seems like there was more to this case than just their side or the neighbor also is here if you want to. I don't know if he wants to speak. I didn't know. Were you planning to speak, neighbor? Or? If you wish me to, I certainly will. I, I think, given that I've heard and seen write ups on both sides, maybe the rest of the council would benefit from hearing both sides. Um, I, I might point out one thing. In our process or our ordinances, and the letter to them states that. The building inspector is in charge of enforcing the ordinances and does so and sends letters based on complaints. Uh, the next step is to appeal to the city administrator, which is a middle step, if you might. And then it goes from the city administrator, if it isn't resolved at that level, to the city council. I might add that the city administrator step has been skipped in this case. They, they, uh, came and visited with me and I said I'd be happy to put this on hold until I had some time to investigate it. If they chose to come to the city council, it would be elevated to the city council level. So so you know the process is now up to the top level that it can, can go to at this point. Scott, did you want to... No, just really quickly. Uh, we, we just wanted to express it to, and get it on the public agenda. It's not so much we wanted to skip you, she just wanted to make sure we scheduled it and got it recorded on the public. We were advised to do it on the recording of the public agenda. Sure. So we don't need to skip you. She just wants to voice her opinion and have it heard, and then we can continue on with the way you have it set. Well, taking it to the council now skips that step. So okay, fair enough. Here, you know, which is fine. There's, there's not an issue with it. It just has to be dealt with now with the council instead of having a one-on-one -on -one and try to resolve the issue some some way uh, you know a couple things that you mentioned uh, uh, you know are different depending on what zones you're in and because this is a residentially zoned area 
the rules that are being talked about apply, they would not apply to the city hall or the Main Street Business District because that's zoned commercially and different different rules or ordinances <coughs> apply in those those cases. So it, what you stated was correct for any residentially zoned area within this within the city. So, so the rules apartment would be, complexes would, and condos and things uh, like well, that. Well apartments may be in mixed use districts that we talked about the setbacks just previously on the hearing. Mm -hmm. If they're in a mixed use district then they'd be different rules that would apply for <coughs> for apartments. It, it, it depends on what district there are in. We don't need to get into that here. We need to go on with whatever direction the council wants to go. Jane, have, have you built any new structures since you got the place? We did some upgrades to an existing structure. Did you enlarge it? Or nope. just it's the same there? size that it was. <clears throat> I think you added a porch, correct? No, the porch was there. The base of the porch and the sides, three sides of the porch are still the same. Did you add a roof system? Yes. Yeah, there was a roof added. Is this address that I don't know the legal description for Hot Springs? It's 142 um, South 16th Street? Correct. I looked at it today and it almost looks like the run, one roof line is encroaching on the neighbor's property. No. Our roof line to our house encroaches on this property. I'm sorry? Our roof line to our house encroaches on this property. But and not the porch. I would like to hear from the other gentleman. Thank you. You're welcome. Good evening, I'm Kelly Schmonick. I and my wife own the property at 128 South 16th Street. Um, we're attempting to sell that property. <clears throat> we recently had a platted survey done of the property, corner pin for set by Anderson Engineering. You can't stretch a line between the two corners without any, abutting against either a building, a fence, or anything. Yes, they did add a porch. Uh, I think if the council so chooses, they can go back to the assessor's office and see pictures of the pre-existing people that was attached to the house that's been replaced by a porch. That even encroaches on the property as well as the house even. I realize the house even is not an issue for this council or a matter that is a civil matter that I will address with them through the courts. But the porch even does encroach on the property. I would like to put up a privacy fence without giving up some of my property, literally. I cannot put up a fence. I'm asking that it be removed in any other structure that is across the property line that isn't a permanent structure. I don't believe that's out of the ordinary. Uh, I pay taxes on that property. I kind of like to use it. As far as the setbacks, I'm not certain. <coughs> I thought the side setbacks were eight feet. It is eight feet for an accessory structure, yes. So, yes, it probably would eliminate their ability to have a structure and utilize their door. Uh, that's unfortunate. I didn't purchase that property. They did. Uh, just as the eve of their house crossed the property line. They failed to exercise due diligence and have a property survey done prior to purchase, or at least request it. That's not my fault. So I would like to put in a privacy fence. I still can't until some kind of action is taken to move their temporary and recently installed structures that can approach in their property. One of the other issues that I listed on my complaint. <coughs> Any questions? Are we talking about the um, the roof on the, the porch? The porch also encroaches, in my opinion, because you can't dot stretch a line across without it impacting or impacting on the strength. And that vertical plane by those pins that are set, you can't look between the two without seeing items in between. And let Kelly finish. I understood. Okay. Understood. Right. I'm happy to answer any questions. Yeah, that's right. The shed's right on the property line. That was the comment about the eight feet back. But that, <coughs> that structure was there when you purchased, right? Correct. <coughs> there was a so part put there at 72. So it's been encroaching for a while. 
and the fence, the chicken wire fence that you see in the picture has also been installed since they moved in. If I'm able to set a privacy fence, I would set it entirely on my property. In fact, I would make certain <coughs> inside my property line by at least an incremental amount. But again, I don't feel I should have to give up my property to put in a fence. Questions for Kelly? Thank you. Uh, Kelly, before you leave, I'm looking at this picture, mm -hmm. uh, front view of the house. Are you saying that the right corner of the house is right on the line? If you look at that picture, you should maybe see possibly a wooden lath with a pink ribbon. Yep. That points down to where that property pin is set. That puts that E over that line also. Yes. If that was a house built along the I assume yes. I, either built or moved in. I'm not even certain if both those houses weren't moved in oh, no. from different parts of the town. But the roof on the back porch was built after the back? Yes. I believe that what was referenced to by Corey of the building permit that she went to City Hall and requested and because it wasn't over 200 square feet. The, the, if I can speak to that, the 200 square foot, square foot rule applies to freestanding structures. It doesn't apply to additions. Um, anytime you extend a, a building, um, even if it's 200 square foot, you add another 200 square foot to it. Both of those would require a building permit. Um, add, adding on to a building requires a building permit. It's, it all depends on how this question is asked. I can build a 200 square foot structure if a building permit required. The question I usually ask is, is, is it standalone or addition? I don't recall this uh, this question of me. I don't, um, it may not have been me that answered it, but. I don't doubt that they asked the question. I just don't remember it. It is Are a sign. Okay. Let, I'm just going to try to be fair here and see if there's any more questions for Kelly. If not, Scott, we'll give you another chance here. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Scott. <laughs> Well, but quickly, it is a standalone because it's not attached to the ice. I've got a couple of bolts in it, hey? Eh? I can take those bolts out. And it's, it's, uh, there's a space between the roof about that thick, but that wide make sure that it was not an attachment to the house. Um, it doesn't have three walls, so I can't air condition it, live in it during winter or spring or any of that. It's just so I can go smoke a cigarette and not do it in my front yard. And it was also, I don't know this has nothing to do with y'all, but I did it when my mom did. You were uh, in Florida, and then you took a personal week off after that. So we went down and we talked to the ladies, and they looked it up in their ordinance book, and they were like, yeah, you don't have to worry about it. But so, so I was like, cool. Uh, we did, and you know the due diligence thing when we bought the house goes but back to Kelsey. Why didn't he do deal due deal to diligence when he bought his property? Because he bought it not too much earlier than we bought ours. Now this is the first time it's being brought up, even though he's selling the property. Now I understand if the new seller wants to have issues and all that. Um, and the last thing, I've done a string. I haven't seen him do one. I've actually done a string. And the only piece of our house that goes over it is the eaves. Um, the front of the house curves. It's not even, you know, it's it's not a straight length. It's, it doesn't hold the house perfectly, unfortunately. Uh, the telephone pole and the side of the house, the power pole, that's a straight length. Is it's two feet over? So if you follow it that way, only the eaves of the house. I've even done research with the courts of South Dakota, and no judge in their right mind has ever force somebody to remove property that's been encroaching. What they do tend to do is find a general market price and you're offered to buy sentimental land to satisfy the needs of both 
parties. Um, if Kelly come and talk to us and tell us he wanted to put a privacy fence in, I would gladly take my fence down. It's a piece of junk. I'd love that. You know, we could share a fence. I don't care if I see the ugly side. You can put the ugly side up. You know, I don't care. Um, if I move the buildings, then I have to be to your new codes. So right now, them staying where they've been since 72, which is much higher to, I think I looked at, I went down to the city Ashley for the ordinance, you told me to go down and look it up. 2002 is the earliest one I could find about anything about the buildings. So we're way before that. Um, but to satisfy it as good neighbors, I would say either sell us a food or, I mean, because I'm not going to go up with a chainsaw and cut off my roof. But I guess we have to go to the civil court for that, but it applies to it all. So maybe if we can come to some kind of agreement there, it'd be the best. But do you guys have any questions for me? Because I, I know my wife didn't answer her. Or you, say you, know, you know when the house was built? The house was built in 1920. Uh, before that, it was a general merchandise building. Uh, it was actually before the land was plotted in 1886. Um, we've found lots of interesting artifacts in that building. So it's one of the original, original homes. So if anything, when it got subdivided in 18, uh, I think it was, what was your? 1886 is when 1886, the that's when the plot line got put in, but nothing was up there yet. It was just so the city could become a city. Any other questions? You been willing to work with the administrator and see if we can work something out on that? Oh, I'd love to work with them. I was just follow, I was following someone else's advice. You got messed up. No, no, someone else. They said do this. And I was like, okay, uh, I trust the guy. You know who I'm talking about. <laughs> and you didn't mess up. It's just go ahead. skip skip the step. May or may not been necessary. So. I'd still like to be able to work it out. I mean, in a I don't want to have to destroy my house for a house that's being sold. Can I interject? The well, city is not act, asking for that at all. Uh, the house was built in 1920. It's a pre-existing use, and there's only one that's going to place in uh, April 1975. As far as the city is concerned, this is a pre-existing structure. The fact that it crosses the property line, that's a civil matter, and the city is not asking that. Uh, anything after 1975, that's where I've um, that's where I've taken my position um, as a building inspector. I've received a written complaint, acted on it as, as the facts as I know it. And the only thing I can hear so far that I would uh, question is uh, the building that uh, the shed that's on the property line. I would simply like to see a, a date on the lumber. That's right. That's where I got the date. It was actually on the interior of the lumber. Okay. Um, it was manufactured uh, in. in uh, 70 is when it was manufactured, but according to the neighbor, all that stuff was put up in 72. That was an avid hunter, and that's where he put his meat. Um, what that would amount to is uh, that's pre existing, it's a portable shed. Um, that's something that I would hope that could be mitigated and uh, you know, worked out between the two landowners to move. It is a fire, you know, a fire concern. Or even our variance committee, the um, planning commission. They never grant a variance for closer than four feet to a property line simply because of fire. If I moved it, would I have to have it up to put over a uh, two-foot footer and all the other stuff? Because right now it's, it's on real red dice. No, it, that one is a standalone structure. It's under 200 square foot. That's where that one comes in. So no, if you moved it over, you wouldn't have to bring it up to um, okay. it's just moving the building. Like you did give me a <laughs> It's part of our five-year plan to remove all those extra buildings because it's just too much. One of them is the car park is all the, the original owner, he died. Their sons did not want to come and clean up their stuff. So it all got stuck piled into there. And then whenever you guys have a week long cleanup, some of it gets moved down to, <laughs> to the junkyard. Next, week. Next, week. Next week. So that's why I'm taking, I uh, found that out, that's why I'm taking the roof down to show good fare on the one one, the one big one. Because I can take all that stuff and throw it in a dump for food, I hope. I hope they don't say it has to be something else. Either way, I don't know. So, so what I'm hearing is uh, basically you're willing to move that shed and take down that roof. Kelly can put up his fence, and I think everybody's happy. 
I would rather, uh, really, rather not have to take that time, but I mean, that's something we have to come in. That's one, that's one thing. I mean, you know, I was, a, I was a horrible mess when my mom did. But that's what got me out of it. So it, it's, it's kind of like, you know, having a vault for her team and ashes and whatnot, and somebody's telling me I have to go destroy it. You wouldn't like to do that for years. Yeah. No, I thought I had heard of a, a, a possible solution. Well. But if I have to, I'll pick it up and I'll set it right in the middle of the concrete area. Because then it's at feet from both sides. That's how narrow our plot is. I don't really have that much space to do anything. But that's the ingress and egress to the back of the house. In the winter time, that's how we get in, knock the shoes, the snow off our shoes, in the spring, knock the mud off our shoes. By destroying that, now I have to go back to the way it was. And originally we had canvas, and then we had a tarp. We had all kinds of stuff that looked god awful ugly. If you imagine an ugly tarp with PVC pipe underneath it, that's what was there. We never got to complain about that. Now I've got a nice wood structure. I mean, solidly built. I've got four by fours. I've got two four by fours for the crossbeam. It's not going anywhere. <laughs> and it lo it matches the house with the you know the, the roof roof shingles and whatnot. But there's an issue. There wasn't an issue two and a half years ago, but now all of a sudden there's an issue. That's the problem I have right now, is what has become so such a big issue that we have to resolve it now, and it get resolved when it was purchased, uh, you know, the line. Our realtor told us that our house has been there so long that if anything was over the line, it's ours. By uh, eminent domain. No, adverse possession. Thank you. So I don't even know the correct terms. And if we wanted to, if we can go to court, can I we, guess we'll be going against the fence, but we're going to get Can we go it. with uh, Harley's proposal for Kelly and you? Or I, I'm not necessarily in agreement with this. I can't hear you, Kelly. I said I'm not in agreement with this. Okay, that's what I'm trying to understand here. Now what we can do is the next step, or if we need to <coughs> the council, look at it a little more and... If we, if we can fall back, then we'll go with them, and then if we don't disagree, if we disagree with Thea's, and we'll just follow it the way it's supposed to be done, after his step, then we'll come back. You guys will have all that time to research. You can come to my house for scones and coffee. I'll show you everything. Kelly yeah, can show you the next day. That way it's not, we're not touching on each other. But we can follow with Harvey Lutz and have him make his decision. And based upon that, we'll go forth. That's what I was trying to say before we said, let's let the county council do it, <laughs> the city council. Is that how we can proceed with the council agreeing to look into if, it? If they're wanting to run through the appeal process with me, I'm happy to do that. In fact, I told them that by okay. phone uh, last week, but I'd be willing to do it just with budgets and the uh, hearing with the uh, for the VA. I just didn't have time last so, week to get up there and take a look at it, so it was going to have to be. We're just following the advice of somebody who's gone through this process before. They said, skip as, it and go. As I understand it, in hearing all of the conversation between Kelly and you two, to me, it is a civil matter. And it's, yeah, it may come down to that, but we'll, you know. You can hash it out. I can have one more set of eyes look at it. And if we can come to some compromise, we will. And if we can't, then you, you both have to move on to your next steps, whatever that's going to be. So. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. I think you have several other comments. Yeah, I'm going to go to Okay. Any other communications from the public? Um, you guys raised your hands at the exact same moment. So <laughs> she's going to go for it. That's she's fine. closer. How's that? <laughs> Okay, uh, this is off the other now, right? Public comments, are we there now? Yes. yes. <laughs> First of all, I want to thank and commend the city council members that were at the hearings today. Um, I don't know how many were there, but I did hear Georgia speak, Cindy and Deanne, and I want to thank them. I personally was there for all of it until this meeting because I wanted to understand completely uh, and hear all the research and the science. Uh, something so important to our community that could affect uh, businesses that bring in money, like the Wild Horse Sanctuary, the plunge, which to me means more than money, it means my health. 
and so I thank you for being there. I also wanted to address um, Mr. Rampelberg's comments about Shed Cove. If it has gone the route it has gone, I am very happy with that, but originally it was founded by Mark Hollenbeck, Cindy Turner, and Heidi McBride from Edgemont, and it all had to do with the uranium mining. I have heard Cindy Turner twice now speak on behalf of Shed Co, including today, for the uranium mining. So I wanted to say that. And Mr. Brampleberg and I disagree on this very entirely. So, um, but I did come here with a question, and the question was, from what I understand, I don't make it to all the city council meetings, mostly I forget unless somebody reminds me, uh, but I understood that the, the last city council meeting uh, folder was found by Theodore, the manager of the plunge, that had unpaid bills for June. And my question is, how much was the unpaid bill, how much were the unpaid bills in that folder? Is that the stuff in the plunge? Everything, everything was lumped together and got paid in July is what happened. So the June is stuff. paid. But everything in, is paid. In, your, in, your, in the newsletter, your, everything was paid. Okay, because so what I understood... Those expenses would fall into July and fall into the next month. So, okay, so as, you, as we start dealing with the next year of operation, uh, July 1 started our second year of ap uh, operation at the plunge. So that... Took care of it. Thank you very much. They were, they were all paid in July. So there are no outstanding bills with the plunge. The liquid bills, I should say that way. <laughs> Thank you, Mary. Um, Cindy, did you want to speak? Yeah, I did. Um, a couple of things. Um, I would first, which wasn't my intent, but I would like to address what Mary had to say. Um, she alleged that a shed co was formed by those out of Edgemont, and that um, is not the case. Um, shed co was formed by a group of people, both of Hot Springs um, and of the county. Um, there are some from Edgemont. Um, because we believed in the fact that if we all work together and uh, instead of trying to do things separately is that we would have a bigger voice in the state as far as economic development for our entire county is concerned. There was no one doing that for our county at this point in time when we started this. In fact, your former um, uh, director of your chamber is one of them that approached me to even start this process. So it did not come from Edgemont. I'm sorry you've been misinformed, but it didn't come from us. No, I said three of the founders were from Edgemont. No, you said founded by. You said four founded by, ma'am. No, I'm sorry. I, I That's what you said. Three of the founders. <coughs> no, okay. we did not do that. We are we were um, elected to the board, uh, indicated interest, as there are nine on the board, so that is a min minority on the board. The rest are from the Hot Springs area in Chetco. Um, actually, the reason I was asking to speak is because we are having a meet and greet on Friday. You all have just received your invitations to that. Um, we encourage you to come. Uh, we do have a new executive director who, because the uh, Governor's Office of Economic Development has looked on Shedco as doing some good things and we applied for a grant, we are now able to have a full-time director. Her name is Amanda Bringle. Um, and we encourage you and this whole public to please come and meet her. Uh, see what she's about. We'll also be discussing and having some things there for Dakota Rising and just a number of other things. So please come and join us. There will be some food to eat and some good conversation. So we hope to see you at Woolies on Friday between 5.30 and 7.30. Thank you. Right, thank you and thank you for the invite. <coughs> thank you. Public yes. comment. Pardon me? Public comment. Yes. yes. <coughs> You're up. <coughs> uh, I was wondering what happened to the discussion, uh, was it uh, about the water fill station? But Your name, sir? Dick O'Connor. I spoke to the council last time and wondered what happened to uh, Has it gone any place? I think he successfully stalled it. <laughs> You were just stationary. It hasn't gone any place. I went around the community up where the water fill stations had I picked up 28 signatures of support of uh, getting it removed. Um, 
are these, are these signatures of properties at within six blocks of the fill station? Okay. Do what no place? Well, as Dwight said, it, it kind of stalled. We definitely need Talk to readdress it. it. Um, I was going to share this. With How them. is that zoned up there? Does anybody know? It's residential aid. <coughs> Please, God. Don Oscar called me today and said that by his residential aid, the city can't have a fill station. Um, it's not public infrastructure. Public infrastructure um, of a municipality can go where it's, it needs to go. Dwight, can we ask you to put public works? Have it pretty much there until we either have a firm answer or. A new plan. And somebody asked me, well, do you have a solution uh, for the situation? Going around in the community, I ran into Bill Hacker, who also signed the petition. He was somewhat of a building inspector, I guess, and also on the council. Somebody said that there wasn't enough water out of the county shop. Well, on my cruising around, uh, there is a fire hydrant out there. Uh, Bill Hacker said that uh, when he was on the council, they ran a six-inch line out there. Uh, I think that would be ideal. Because you know, in 71, <coughs> uh, there was a parcel of land that they were going to use. I don't know when the ball got dropped or what. But he said there was a parcel of land that they were going to use out there. I think uh, that would be the ideal spot because the majority, I believe, of the water is heading down the Cascade. Um, you got waterways uh, eight point three pounds per gallon. And I don't know what size tanks are being hauled by trailers, pickups, etc. And that's a lot of weight and in a residential area that could uh, get away from the white box. Also talked to a lady in this area who got her house ran into not long ago. I don't remember she didn't uh, tell me how long ago. By a vehicle coming down 21st Street. <laughs> ran right into her house, into the bedroom. Know where 21st Street is at in the slant of the, of the street coming off from the fill station that you are suggesting, or someone is suggesting putting a second one right on that corner. Where do you think people are going to pull off and come down? They're going to come down 21st Street. Uh, a couple of other thoughts. Uh, out on the bypass. Uh, the Shamanics, I believe, own some land along there that's, uh, that has quite a bit of land, uh, which would allow for two fill stations, three fill stations, a line of vehicles, all off the bypass. Uh, a little lesser uh, appealing spot uh, for me would be the, the old McGaw flower shop, which is off the bypass. Why did we look at these areas at all? Before? We looked at this spot on the bypass and we had people in whining about it. And, well, I think the county shop, but we were told by the ex mayor that they did a water test and there's not enough volume to fill trucks at the county water shop. We can do another test and maybe that's what we Why need to do. Why would we have a fire? I, I, like that, I, I like that spot too, Dick. But, well, it makes sense. But if there's not enough water there, it don't make sense. Well, we got water yeah, to the I hospital. thought it was a four-inch line going out there, too. Two, two different lines. The hospital line is set different from the line going to the county shop. Right. It's, a pressure, it's a pressure problem that we have out there at the county shop. There's not enough pressure there to run that type of... Is that something that can be addressed, though? 
yeah. you want to drill a well up on top of the hill, it costs the question to put in a million, three million gallon tank. Be more than happy to jack the pressure. Oh, I would love to do that. <laughs> yeah. No, um, it's a pressure problem out there. I've, I've been in on some of the testing they've done, and that's the reason that we've stayed away from that. Is the pressure is very poor up there on top. Is there any? We understand, because ideally the county, that would be perfect. You know, we looked at it, but that's what we run into is the pressure body problem. What would cause it not to have the pressure on the body? It's just too far away and it's elevation, elevation and smaller is, line. Right. Well, it sounds like the mayor would like to refer this to public work, so that'll be the spot where we need so to continue we'll this. Shuffle it underneath the rug and we'll actually go to something. I, I would like to ask that we keep it on the agenda until we either decide to keep it where it is again or we continue to look for other options. But Dwight always likes to give me a feedback on the agenda. How long ago was the pressure to test that? A year ago. A year ago? Yeah. All of these spots were really looked at a year ago. We looked at eight, or maybe at nine different spots that were looked at for water fill station. And as we kept bringing one up, there were neighbors Duh. that, that were, were <laughs> concerned about it in that area. And we moved to a new spot, we moved to a new spot. So that's what we're gonna continue to do. So. Yeah, he's got 28 signatures on here. So we do have some concerned citizens in that neighborhood. So we- And we had similar we'll on the other two again. locations so. that we had also. Basically what's happening is, is we're going to continue looking at this and as of right now there's no quick plans to do anything with it. Okay? There isn't. We're not going to continue with the park idea. We're not going to continue with the second fill station there. Right now, like we're gonna, we're at a standstill. We're more or less going to go back and start over and, and see what we can find at other places in town. We're not just going to pull through with you. We we yeah. understand your concern, and we're going to continue and go back and recheck some of these places and and there Plus again. The pressure you know, on the bypasses or pressure. I think there's sufficient pressure there, but we don't own any land. Right. We looked at purchasing land for a water fill station. That option came up as part of those nine areas that we were looking at, but there was never a enough of a consensus of the council to take any of those forward. Thank We've you. got new council members now too, so you know, maybe it's a matter since of revisions. Since you brought brought up your concerns. We're not just going to run up there tomorrow, tear down the old building, and put a new water service in there. So okay. we're back to we're kind of back to square one. Is there any way we can put a, a south gate on the on the landfill, come out on that road, so they don't have to climb that hill if you put a fill station down there? Go out on that back road because it's nice and flat, and then they can go out to the pipe. I think we're cross, crossing private property. Well, we might be able to get permission. There ain't, it is, isn't it added? Isn't there any alleys or anything back there? Uh, well, I don't believe so. It's I think it's all. residential, though. Well, I think it's not a commercial. No, because that's commercial. Because Steve has all this stuff right there. <coughs> like I say, we're just back to square one. We're we'll just, you know, but, <coughs> like I say, don't, don't worry about us pulling in there next week and tearing the buildings down and putting them in the back. I'm not going to guarantee that the building won't be torn down, at least the big building, because that one's supposed to be coming down for a long time now. The water fill station building is going to be there until we find a new, another location or a different location for the water fill station. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I think we'd get more money off that lot if we had it solar with the building on it. How much can we do? Are there any other communications from the public? Yeah, I got some. Mr. Roy Ellers, he is the uh, property owner coming in the Hot Springs where that sign was that we took down. Which, wait. That sign coming in. Okay. He has no problem with the city redoing it and putting it back up. 
he does have a problem with people trespassing on his property without permission. His concern is if someone gets hurt on that hillside, who's responsible? My understanding was that he wanted to sign out of there. Yeah, he did originally, you know. but after I talked to him and told him it was basically a veterans organization, he said he has no problem with it. Somebody has to go onto the property to maintain it. And he under, well, it hasn't been maintained for how many years? This is the first time he's had any attention for probably 20 years. His only concern is ask first. You don't just you don't just go and do something on private property without asking. That's the same courtesy to hire anywhere else to expect. So, so the fix that was headed, and the street department, I think, went out there and removed it, I believe. They took, they left the post, but they, they took the sign down, and they're supposed, I guess, redoing it. And the intent was to put it up somewhere else so it wouldn't be on private property any longer. I don't know. I, don't so, know. So I haven't heard anything about it except for he asked me where it went because he, he noticed the sign was gone and was just kind of curious. It's, get, it's getting re refurbished or re rehabbed, similar to the one that's down in the new park by across from Pro Build at Motel 6, that same wood. I think we ought to move it. I just think it's so hard to see up there. A lot of people don't see it. It's quite a up there. Well, so, so you wanted it down, and now it's down. I don't think there should be any Well, he, he won't have a bit of problem if it stays down. He has no problem with it being a civic organ or like a, a veterans organization. He just didn't like the idea of somebody coming out there and getting it, getting it out. Correct. Yeah. Without giving him notice. Correct. I can, I can That's appreciate That's reasonable. That. Absolutely. Where, were we planning to reinstall it there? I Not thought it there, was coming no. down. No, it, it was the, coming the down. order was to bring it down, refurbish it. When it's refurbished, we will decide where it's going to go back up at, but not at that same location, somewhere where it's more public, more more. Okay, viewed. is there anything else on the per private property that we need to take down? But, does he want anything else removed, Wes? Yeah. If, if we're going to take it down, we need to take the post out, too. But if we're going to put it back up, I guess. We have permission to go on for one day to take the sign down. That's all I know of. So if we yeah. want to go pull the posts out, we can go do that. Or if he doesn't care, we'll just leave them where they are. He'll just take a chainsaw and cut them off. If you're going to take the sign down, he'll have no problems. He has no, nothing against any veterans group or anything else. He just would like someone to ask for permission. Because I can understand his concern with insurance. I mean. And, and that was negotiated through another council person here to get it removed and off of that. Oh, I told you to have Wes call him. You know I did. So the direction that came to me was that he wanted it off his property because of liability reasons, so it's off of his property. And I told you you ought to have Wes call him and get permission. Well, either way, I guess he'll be happy. If the sign doesn't go back up, he won't care. If he goes back, he won't care. Can just you give follow up and ask him if he wants us to come take the post down? Because it's my understanding we're moving it to a more well, public If we're going to move, I will sure call him and ask him if he wants us to take the post out or if he just wants to take and saw him with a chainsaw himself. Okay, thank you. All right, are there any other communications from the public? All right. Um, we have the personnel section. I assume you all look at that. We already addressed the hearings, so we will now go into the ordinances that were already discussed. That's uh, first reading, 1144, amending section 27-A, front and rear setback requirements in a mixed use district. Motion to approve. Any additional discussion? <coughs> Take a vote on the first reading. All in favor say yes. 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 Opposed say no. Okay. The next first reading, Ordinance 1147, rezoning Indianapolis Avenue slash Highway 18 bypass between South 16th and South 19th. Motion to approve. Second. Any additional discussion? Scott, can you clarify the streets, please? 
not 16 to 19, is it? 6th Street and South 9th Street. 6th and 9th. Yeah, I think the six other one would say 6th. Okay. So I didn't see that right on the agenda. Correct on the ordinance, incorrect on the agenda. Correct. That's correct. <laughs> okay. So I'm, I apologize. It is 6th, South 6th and South 19th. 9th. Oh, that's wrong too. Okay. We were overzealous with our ones today. Okay. Did I get a second? We got a second. Yes. Okay. And so do we need to vote? Yes. All in favor, say yes. 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 Those opposed, say no. Okay. Ordinance 1148, rezoning Minicotta Avenue, Spring Avenue, and Villa Teresa. <laughs> Any additional discussion? I only have one question. When we did that, why didn't we go basically one block further up Minicotta? There's some vacant, a bunch of vacant lots in there. Why didn't we encompass that? Because they're privately owned. Okay. I just, and I own one of them. I just, and the house on the corner up right there. I just thought if they're redoing this, it would make it easier for someone and to ever really buy those. Well, that's <laughs> I was just it's curious. Residential, where you're at. Yeah. Any other discussion or concerns? <coughs> Wes? Nope. Okay. All in favor, say yes. Yes. Those opposed, say no. Abstained. Thank you. All right. Craig's favor. Why are we changing? What are we changing this for? It went from commercial to mixed use. For the liquor? Oh, no, no, no. I don't, I haven't got to the moment. Is that the next one? Yes, I'm sorry, I think you went back one. The you liquor ordinance okay. came for first reading about six meetings ago, and it had a misprint in there of like 10 or 15 special liquor licenses, so it was sent back to the attorney for further review and with all the transitions, but if, if, if you had, uh, as a council, had changed that to like 30 permits or 40, you know, I can't remember, 30. 30, 30 permits per establishment for the special licenses for events at the Mueller Center, and the events in the parks, that sort of thing. So it corrected that, so this could have been a second reading, but since it's been six meetings ago, it, it was decided that we just start all over again. I, I didn't always do it, that's why I was asking. I thought someone else asked about the, having a beer garden or roping it off or yeah, something. Yeah, we supposed to. That was supposed to be looked at, too. It is in there saying that it is required, but it isn't. There's no definition to how big it has to be, how small it has to be. It's at the discretion of the event. And depending on what the event would be, you might need a bigger area or a smaller area. The council can vote on how we approve it. The individual permits. Yeah. 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 Yeah, if you don't like what's coming through on an individual permit for that, you can put additional stipulations and requirements <coughs> on that, a special liquor license. Special events. Okay. Did I get a motion on the second? Yeah, I don't think so. Second. Any other discussion? Yeah. Okay. Uh, isn't it supposed to be underlined what we're changing in this ordinance? But so we can then go through and figure out what's changed? There, there's no changes. It, it's just amending it and bringing it into the <coughs> format of the recodification of our ordinances. So any ordinance that has an A behind the chapter name is part of the recodification process that we've been going through for five years, Scott, ten years, whatever, that Don DeBreeze has been working on on trying to go through every ordinance we have and it, is it still effective still doing what it's supposed to do or do we need to change the ordinances and, and get rid of them so that's the ongoing ordinance recodification process that we've been going through ever since i've been here so since before my time so we're 
We're not changing anything. This is pretty well, this is everything that you've been doing. Uh, there were some new law changes uh, two years ago from the state level on farm wines, and that was one section that wasn't in the uh, in the real old alcoholic ordinances because it wasn't even a, a license that was being called. So the motion that Don gave the city attorney was match the city ordinance on alcoholic beverages to whatever the state law said for alcoholic beverages. So that's what this does. Any further discussion? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Say no or whatever you feel like. Okay. We'll work on that one. All right. New business. Platt from Sandra Wilson, South 6th Street. Scott and Kathy, I have you as concerned with this one? Kathy, well, you don't play at me. <laughs> no fighting. You're good at this. Thank um, you for coming. <laughs> Thank you for having me. I asked Kathy to come and explain this a little bit, but before Kathy gets started, I'd just like to make a comment that this did, this plat did come before the council once before it was approved. Um, when it went back to everybody involved, um, they did find two more discrepancies. And isn't any kind of code violation, is in fact that have anything to do with the city. It's all straightening out um, this plat for these private and corporate uh, ownerships. Um, again, it, the city's part of this is to make sure that the lots and the streets conform with the zoning ordinance, subdivision ordinance, and the comprehensive plan. So it's oversight to that degree by the city. Other than that, this is just. Um, Kathy and her cohorts uh, fixing the, the plat problems for their uh, clients. And so that's that's what this amounts to. I, I wasn't totally clear on the corrections though, so if you could uh, take sure. over from here. Thanks, Kathy. Um, <coughs> the Halls and Wilson families have owned that intersection property that's now UBC for many years. Through the years, they were by themselves kind of selling bits and pieces off. And the surveys had been done, but somehow, um, well, for instance, when we went to sell our first parcel at the northern part, the legal description that they had was an east 70 feet, or I guess west 70 feet. Well, this lot was never, lot three, was never 140 feet to begin with. So all of a sudden we realized we had an east 70 feet of lot three and a west 70 feet of lot three, but it was never big enough to divide into 70s. They came up with that somehow and called it, that's what they named it came to find when we had a buyer for the storage units that we had an encroachment because everybody thought they had 70 feet, but we didn't. So we either were going to have to take down that portion of the building or replat, and we, of course, tried to replat. Well, we also found along the way that in those sales through the years, the LN properties who pro-build leases from actually owns the property that is being conveyed to the year. <coughs> there was a slice right down the middle that never in the legal description got conveyed. So we had a problem with them having a portion of the property right down the middle. And um, I don't know if Scott was able to send this to you, but what I have here, I'll pass it around, is the very tiny little triangular part out and quick claimed to, and that's where the encroachment was. And then with the other strip is what Mrs. Hall still owned, divided pro 
yard in half. So they kind of quit playing to each other, and <clears throat> everyone we replanted both, and everyone walked away with the property they thought they owned on the lawn. And that's basically what it was, but in a very challenging and roundabout way. So we, it's nothing's changed. Everyone's got what they always thought they had, but because realtors weren't involved and surveys weren't involved and people, So there were no surveys done? There were, but I don't that's my, know. I have a problem with it. This isn't the first time we've seen this, and that's why I was kind of yeah. confused how the courthouse missed it, how the surveyors missed it, how... I, the biggest problem I could gather is when the Halls sold it, they did have it replanted, but somebody gave it without... They, they renamed those, they broke it down so the different family members could own those different parcels. And somewhere when that happened, they gave it a legal description of the east 70 feet and the west 70 feet of lot three. Well, there were only 129 feet, so that probably could have been and should have been caught. But what they did back then is they replanted that to be this parcel number 101 at the top, which had the storage units. And when we went to sell that, that's when we realized the day before closing, I think it was, but wow, you know, part of that legal description didn't jive with our feedback. And we had it be surveyed so we could show them how it was presented by the way. So it's been surveyed now and it's, <laughs> it's legal. Yeah. So, okay. yeah. Scott, is there anything wrong with this? <laughs> Everything is good with I it? I think we, we hope we've got it. Um, my, my review of this is just to make sure that it conforms with the zoning, and subdivision, and comprehensive plan. That's basically my disclaimer on this one. So uh, we, it meets all those. It does meet all those. So all we have to do is give our seal of approval and the plan can go through. Yeah, this is a corrective plan. It makes everybody happy. Everyone that's signed the plan. That's all I want to hear. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, it's that. Motion to approve. I'll second it. Thank you. Any further discussion? Are we good? Need to hold on it. All, yeah. All in favor say yes. 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 Those opposed say no. Alright, thank you, Kathy. Thank, thank you, Scott. You're going to leave. Thank you. Next. Alright, um, the next item is the 2012 audit comments. <coughs> um, I believe, Harley, you would just like to speak to the process. Uh, uh, Carol, I have asked that this be on the agenda. Um, just a, a little bit of update since the audit came out. Uh, we've been working with uh, Kettle Thorsonson. Uh, actually, last week spent two full days with them. Uh, I think we'll need another day or two. And I guess what I would say is we're reviewing the audit comments. Uh, we're taking those comments and applying them to the year of 2013. So I guess what we're doing is kind of doing a pre-audit, if you might, of the 2013. Uh, as soon as that is complete, we can solicit uh, new RFPs because our old auditor has chosen to go on to other work and will not be auditing, so we'll have to get a new auditor. And I, I've got five, uh, I have call this uh, end of last week from a sixth one, so we may have even six interested auditors to, to do audit services for the city in the future. Can I ask what your cost is? We're doing the work by the hour uh, with them, so we're, we're going to be, uh, I guess I don't have a, an exact number yet because we're not completed, but uh, we're working at, at the their audit rate is seventy-five dollars an hour, and we've had sixteen hours at this point to find Who are the auditors you're looking at? Uh, Kettle Thorsonson themselves, although they had to make a decision. You know, can do they, you know, separate themselves from this early on work versus doing the audit? Casey Peterson, uh, Gary Larson. Uh, Uh, there's one in the north, uh, Pummel, or 
David Pummel and Associates. Uh, there's a, a single audit gal, uh, Susan, uh, I remember her last name, uh, up there. That's the five. And then uh, this other one, I told him to send some information email with interest <coughs> on the six points. So those would be the two large firms, uh, two independent, like what Kathy was. And uh, the other two in the middle would be what I would call medium-sized audit firms. Okay. All right, thank you, Harley. Oh, oh okay. Um, the third item of new business is a street replacement, Washington and 4th Street. And I don't know who added this to you. I do. Okay. It's my understanding that uh, Tracy and Dwight and Harley went up on this street and made a decision that we're not going to have them replace it because it's not bad enough. Just because they took their track up there and made some pretty good marks. But Tracy also said that Hills Material could come in and maybe heat that and smooth it out. Talk like something like that. Well, what are we going to do with the curb? Because they took that track off over the curb in many spots and they broke it out. Just chip the edge a little bit. Mm -hmm. Right the curb. Let's say you want to dress that up too, I guess. Have, have you to me, it's not worth tearing it? the whole curb out for a little chip off the edge. There's no. more than a little chip on here. I, I looked at it pretty good. There's quite a few I chips. I did too, Greg. Are you expecting the contractor to repair? Well, yeah. Is that what you're well, if they can fix it, fine. But I've seen concrete patches not hold up right here. So. I think ultimately, probably what should happen is we should have some sort of ground rules with the contractors, let them know that it's not okay to do some of these things. I mean, I, I wasn't at their pre-con, so I guess I don't know what they were told, but. When they first started, they put dirt down on the street before they put the track over. And further they went along, they just didn't put dirt down on the street. I, I just think they need to be held accountable for it. If they're going to have it fixed, I have no problem. But if they can't fix it, I think they need to replace it. That, that, that's just my opinion. I think we need to have a final inspection before they're done in general, right? I mean, that's what I would prefer we do for all contracts. And, 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 and if Bill's can go up there and eat it and fix it, I have no problem with that. That pad that they ran off. The yeah. We, that that they be should have to replace that. that. And, you know, sometimes you do more damage than good, but like, it's a little package, right? Support, right? Yeah. You should have never been there with a track going. Maybe we should discuss the, the inspection process that we want to follow and then negotiate with them if, you know, things aren't done properly or at least to our expectation and we can discuss with them how we, we remedy that. I do agree with Craig that uh, we do need to hold the contractor responsible for any damage that we've done. It either has to be fixed properly or replaced by the <coughs> seller. Yeah, that's why we hold the last payment. Right. True, but it, according to the engineer, there's no structural problems with it, so would the board be open to a monetary settlement instead of you know, replacing, doing a full replacement of it? There's what some sort of monetary, monetary settlement for that. I mean, they ran that up on the bare curb with no dirt. What do you think the track always <coughs> going to have some kind of damage, you think? Because they're not light. It's a big hole. I just I don't think it's it's right that they think they can do things like that. I just I don't know. A normal contractor, I guess, wouldn't. But I, I, I don't know. Go whatever you want, Mr. Mayor. Go on with it. We don't know what they were told. have a final inspection, inspection before final payment, and you know, we need to negotiate any damage that they did. I would need someone who saw the road in the previous condition. But it's brand new, the material just put in last year, or the year before. Um, I think we should always do a final inspection, so I guess my 
Yeah. Well, you're, you're, if you're going to do something you need in, in respect to the contract, you need to do it while he's got everybody here. So if you're going to make a decision, you don't wait till the final day that you go do an inspection and say, hey, you've got to move your crew back in here and, and, and fix this. You need to do it while he's here in town. So, I understand so, him. He's going to have building material to do something with it. That's what Tracy told me. Find out I, I agree with you, I don't know. <coughs> Talk to Tracy about it tomorrow, go up there and look at it. Um, I assume there was no damage at all to the new road. No, it wasn't was there yet. It's okay. still... Yeah, uh, it scuffed the asphalt a little bit. Nothing deep, nothing just real light. Worth tearing the whole road out for that or not? Well, Phil's been needed that. Right, well, the monetary settlement. <coughs> you want to consider, guys. Just a suggestion or an option. Yeah. Are you okay with at least addressing that as an option? Yeah. Okay. All right. Any further comments on the street replacement of Fort and Washington? Okay. Thank you, Craig. Committee reports? Uh, administration and promotion met August 13th at 2 p.m. Uh, we discussed, uh, well, Harley updated us on sales tax projections for 2014. At the end of July, uh, year to date, the sales tax was up 19.6%. In 2010, we were up 1% for the year. 11 to 12, that was up 3.3%. 12 to 13, it dipped 9%. But 2014 has jumped back. And at one point, we were up almost 21% or more. And now, at the end of July, we we're at 19.6. We also discuss, discussed uh, unemployment reporting was incorrect in the first quarter, but the second quarter corrections on it washed out the incorrect <coughs> in the first quarter. And then we discussed the plunge gift shop. Should we or not lease out? And the city <coughs> has been approached to lease out uh, the gift shop. At this point of the year, uh, we have collected through July of 14, $41,415 worth of uh, products sold, and the expenses on that was 20, $29,319, so they had good, good profit. Uh, that's swimsuits, jewelry, t-shirts, souvenirs, toys, rocks, and miscellaneous. Yes, you have a question? Yes, sir. Oh, you were talking about a 19.6% increase. That's over last year. So you've made up the 9% that you were down. No, 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 no. The, the, the uh, sales tax at July 31 was up 19.6%. The year. Over the two, same period last over year. Over the same, same period, period last year. year. So the 9% that you were down, you're back up right. plus some. The 9% the, the was an incorrect number too. It was only 2% down between down. those two years. So that's, yes, you made up that, the 2%. To, that's okay because he's telling me that 25% profit margin on your gift shop stuff is, is a good margin too. And any retailer would tell you that that sucks. Well, it's yeah. better than a dollar. We have a different opinion as a, as a retailer. Yes. Better than a dollar. Yeah. It's not losing money, but yeah, it's definitely not your average expected rate. That's oh, no, and, and any profit is good. Right. But saying that it's a good profit is a misnomer. In your opinion. In pretty much any retail opinion. In your opinion. I'll, Thank I'll, you. I'll walk down the street and I'll ask you. Thank you. Okay. Have we taken a good inventory of that? Oh, yes. that, that is part of what uh, Ginger, the assistant director, is working on his inventory in general. Because I know we went in there one night to buy a couple t-shirts and 
they just said, go ahead and go on in there, and there's nobody in there, and they were busy out there, so nobody's watching this. So I, mean, I could have walked out with quite a bit of stuff. It's um, not going to be staffed after the end of this month. I just had a quick question. Have you looked into the staffing costs? Give, was that part of the cost? No. Okay. And the other question I had was, um, how much would a lease break? We haven't decided on that yet. So We're just in discussion. Okay. Just curious. It's a good question, and we are looking at it. And we talked about a couple ideas already. Right. The le <coughs> leasing. Oh. So it's definitely something we need to address. Any other questions for Carl? If we do mm -hmm. lease this out, it will come to a vote of council, right? It won't or it will? It will. Yes. Okay. Or I'm fine with that. Anything else? No. That's okay. Um, public Works, Dwight. Uh, I wasn't at the meeting. Oh, I'm sorry. We had, a, we had a short meeting with Tracy and I discussed 4th Street a little bit. Things are going up there. We should, if everything goes, I, they should make, it should be done by their deadline. So we shouldn't have to go with an extension. And he's glad it, he hasn't done anything with the trickle filter bid because, and he's glad that he didn't. In the last couple of weeks, they've had more problems with stuff in the trickle filter that they may have to change. The main rod going down through the middle of it broke. So they're kind of back to redoing this trickle filter bit. So I'm good. And just a little additional comment. Um, I know I've, I've asked the council chairs to come up with their own agendas, but in the case of public works, since we get a lot of information in City Hall, we're going to be more helpful with the agenda for public works than maybe the other ones just because of the nature of um, what's going on in City Hall. So, anything else? Okay, um, code and ordinances, I don't believe Craig is moving forward with that. Is that correct? So, I will be looking into that one a little bit more. Um, Mr. Grimes, I know you had a meeting. Yep, we had a brief little meeting and we kind of looked at some playground equipment. Kind of looked at some stuff in our price range and uh, I talked to uh, the guy from Omaha or Lincoln, I can't remember. He was uh, going to give us a price, install price, versus if we had a community build and then had them come and uh, inspect it, do a final inspection and kind of sign off on it. But uh, I guess I'm, I'm kind of waiting for you and me and I guess the, the parks to uh, sit down and, and visit, I guess, so we can kind of, I guess, hash things out. But, uh, you know, the, the previous council voted to buy this playground equipment, so I, I kind of think we should move forward and just, and just do it. And we don't have to install it, right? I mean, someone's right? gonna have to install it. Either a community build but install I mean, we, or we can move forward with. Oh, we could buy it, buy but it now. not install it until spring or something. Yeah. Um, do you want? Would you like me to just set up a meeting with you and um, Art and just make a decision? Is that what you would like? Well, the knowledge we're running would like to talk about too. I'd kind of like Harley there too, so I guess I'd like to maybe when. When uh, the four of us can sit down, and anyone else is welcome to. Is uh, most days after three? Four three? Yep. Okay. All right. Do you have some information on the survey to do? Not much Not more. Much. I mean, what what you have in the budget packets for the parks is what they. Submitted so far for actual comments. Yeah, I saw they have a bill. Okay. Yeah. She, uh, I can't remember what her name is. Tanya. Tanya was asked to come down. 
we just kind of rehashed the same stuff we've been talking about. So, was there a plan for the survey report? It was it end of September? When they get it done, yeah. Right? As soon as they get it compiled, they're going to they're going to present it to us. Is this playground equipment for the Brookside, or yep. that is for Brookside? Anything else? Nope. Thank you. Um, I saw Justin was here, but he stepped out. Did you, did you hear why he left? It looked like it was no, urgent. I, so. I was still at a call. Okay, he did have a, a public safety meeting last week. Trying to think if we really we're we're going to start trying to get better reporting from dispatch on a couple different areas, you know, to narrow down where calls are really coming from. Um, they're going to have monthly meetings. I guess I'm speaking for Justin here, but uh, they're going to be at our meeting the second uh, Monday of the month going forward. And Al Henry was there as well with some grant money opportunities. So they're working on those. Um, I don't remember what anything else. I was hoping, you know, Justin would be reporting, but he will, you know, as they can be reporting going forward. Um, I'm just going to remind you that they had a request on that parking and that one that there was only for public safety. Pointing to property, I believe you own. So I'm. Yeah. She also talked. Oh, okay. Uh, the police department when I asked public safety. They talked about the south side of the street. No big parking on that side. The south side of the street. The hill uh, side. That would be <coughs> your property. But that would be on the hill side of the street. No, that's. Uh, it would be where your swimming hole. Is. South side. Coming down. Your left as you're driving up coming the down. No parking on that side. I think it was addressed more just that corner is what the problem was. Oh. Uh, I'm no just telling way. Yeah. that's what they said, that there's going to be no parking on <clears throat> that side of the street going up through Minnecotta. The last three years we've talked about the parking on Minnecotta because of uh, the bed and breakfast and uh, the developmental center. I mean, there's always been kind of bottleneck there. And then you get on up around the corner, and there's always an issue there. But there's been a lot of accidents. I, that's true. I never did hear. Is there a visibility issue coming around that corner? Right. There's two quarters. There's two quarters that are kind of an issue coming down, in my opinion, coming down the state home. From the state home, one is right up there by yours, Carolyn, and the other one on the right side. It bends just like it does on the left side bends right at spring. So the issue is it would be safer not to have parking in certain areas there? You can't see the cars on the left side at the bend at spring coming down from the state home. But you can see the cars on the right side. Um, I'll take this into public safety and maybe get a little more information okay. from those of you on Minicata. <laughs> I've got a question, Ms. Mayor. Yes. For the past few years, the public safety has complained about not having a police officer by the school. I set up at Norton's every morning have coffee for an hour. And the people that drive through there when the school's up, and you never see a police officer up there. I'd like to request a police officer set up there every hour while kids are going to school. I've already I requested that my okay. first meeting Thank you. So, um, Justin's well aware of that request. Um, and I will be watching. Thank you. Thank you. We need to do something with these crosswalk signs. <laughs> and the, the problem is, is I, I walk it pretty much every day. And the problem we have with the crosswalk signs is that. It's getting, now that the tourists have slowed down, it's getting more dangerous to cross the street. Because the tourists stopped at those crosswalk signs, but the locals don't. It's has got a lot of Yeah. They'll stop. I'll say it's hit or, hit or miss, literally, on, on who 
stops. Yeah, so when I come up to the street, I look to see if the car's got a, a, a old River County license plate on it or if it's got an out of state. It's I got an out of state. So I just go ahead and walk if it's a yeah. Pines Springs outfit where I stop. Well, I think that this. I think part my personal opinion on this is we really need to paint our crosswalks. Yeah. They're doing it right now as we speak. Yeah, by the school I saw they were doing it. Where they paid for us? Up the school. That's they were cool. starting they were starting up there. That new city machine is up. Yeah. And they've been moving around yeah. a little bit. I a lot to, of them to do. Yeah, I talked to Billy about it and he said he really wanted the road etched as opposed to just painted. Like so. the state does. Yeah. The last longer. Yeah. So we need to Make our paint last longer. Yeah. All right, Georgia, last but not least. Well, I set up the time for the last um, Wednesday and Friday of the month for our meetings. And we have the Plunge Airport, Mueller Center, Library, and Golf Course on there. I have visited with all of them, and we have a lot of good things coming about. Um, the Plunge has gone through some major. <laughs> issues with management and all that and the friends and the um, advisory board have combined now so there's just one committee um, the airport was looking at they came to the budget hearings and they were looking at building a new tea hanger i guess they yes. call it mm -hmm. and so those are that's things. not really a this year no but, thing, but but it's something in the works they do have um a credit card like out there now, so that was an improvement. And then I talked to Chris down here at the Mueller Center, and he did order some chairs, I guess, that were supposed to have been done before. We ordered 200, I believe. And I, after that talk, I had talked to people, and they said, Oh, yeah, we need new chairs down here. We have to stack half of them for usable. So we did get that accomplished. We're looking at getting the dishwasher down here and I think that would bring in more revenue if we had that possibility for people. Um, library, I think she came and talked to our budget people uh, last Wednesday and um, nothing really special new there right now. Golf course, I did go up to the survey uh, input from our um, uh, hired company, Kevin. Kevin, yeah, and there was a lot of good ideas and uh, number one priority would be safety and uh, I think we're looking into that first uh, some of our issues we have a lot of expenses we could change places of different holes and <clears throat> um, it would be really expensive <laughs> up to like 1.6 million dollars and uh, so right now we'll probably just work on safety issues and the things to make it safer. That's what it's called here. It's like private hangers as opposed to one big open room. And the shape just happens to be a team to accommodate the wings. Please. We've got some different pictures of them here. But um, Ed firmly believes that it could be a revenue generator. We're out at the airport this afternoon actually talking to the FAA and DOT and um, they're going to be working on the master plan and um, they do, my understanding, see that, you know, we do have a potential for running out some more hangers out there. And they just would like us to consider that as we go through our budgets. It's about 200000 for a hanger. Um, it was potentially yes and yes, but uh, it, you have to jump through the grant process, uh, you know, with where the match is going to come from and where where it's going to be. But until we get a little further along with the master plan, they're not going to want to see any other improvements started. Right, and, and it did happen. mention this wasn't you know for 2015. It's really you know maybe next year type of thing. But he's. He's uh, hitting us early and often probably on this one, so I just shared it with Georgia when he brought it into City Hall. But, um, you know, they, they, there's definitely a belief that there's potential for more activity out there, and, and he's just showing us, you know, what it would take to get some more um, 
revenue from paying the rent toll? The FAA was here from Bismarck as well as the state aeronautics group, but I think they were impressed with some of the background information that Ed has gathered on what's going on out there, both from a current operational standpoint and requests that have been coming in for the use of the airport. <coughs> Of course, the seat guys are out there. And if any of you are into looking at unique aircraft, it's, it's quite spectacular to see the seat plane out there. Only time the airports actually make money is when they lease it out to Dave Tyson. He paid a lease on it and collected funds himself. He paid the city 5% of the money. I offer chunks of money from him. <laughs> There, there is the Fall River fly-in the first weekend after Labor Day out there that brings in quite some in interesting uh, aircraft also. It's worth your trip out there uh, at the end of that. And they really would like to see week. us going out there and supporting I, that. We've been out there. I've gone out the last two years and it's really spectacular. <laughs> oh. um, I guess I'd like to say one thing about all these guys that we've come in with that are checking over what we've got, what we need. And I'm all for safety, don't get me wrong. But that safety card is one that everybody plays when they want the money. So right. So we've got to make sure and I'm sure well I'm not, I don't know, but I would suspect that somewhere there are some safety rules and regulations set up to address that sort of stuff. Yeah, I think our, our you driving you can spend a lot of money on the safety. Yeah. <laughs> our driving range out there though, the location of it in proximity to I think three other holes actually is a safety issue that I think at least by the second week that I have been in office was brought to my attention. Um, a lot of it has to do with the technology. You know, people can just simply hit farther than it used to, and it is a safety issue. How long has that driving range been there? Since the late 70s, I believe? And they said there's never been an accident. Uh, no, there hasn't. That, that was what he said. I mean, oh. There has. I'm going to just not comment further on that one. I guess, but what I'm saying is we want to make sure that we look at this stuff very closely when they start. Well, they, they have a, another meeting coming up, and, you know, I would uh, encourage the council to attend that. When is the next meeting? Um, I don't, I think he's going to get back to us. Yeah, I don't think he's going to get back to us. Yeah, there's a next meeting pretty soon, and I'll try to make sure whoever wants to try to It seems to me like it was September 10th, but I don't know if I've got yeah, the right it's, meeting. It's not here. imminent, but it's not that far out either. Um, but yeah, that would definitely be the time to, to bring up those issues and concerns and, and really think about what we want to do with that stuff there. Yeah, they had issues a little bit with the parking down below to the park the golf carts and um, you know, just customer dissatisfiers yeah. that you know yeah. it may be more easily addressed. Yeah. Down below, I've been there it's just that it's so far Walk up we hear home. tales of near heart attacks. But then well, if you're out the there golfing, you're going to exercise. I'm confused, ladies. You're going to have to explain this to me. <laughs> I go golfing to get exercise, yeah, but I can't I walk up that. the hill to get my cart? Okay. I guess I'm straight then. Yeah. It's, uh, <laughs> that was one of my first thoughts. <laughs> yeah, yeah it, it's really more of a, a process change from my perspective and to let people know they need to wrap their, their clothes off at the top and then walk up without their clothes. But they're, they're working on some signage out there. That there is some signage that says Yeah, and they talked about I think they're going to try to make that more um, visible. Uh, Har are you done? Yep, I am. Okay. Harley uh, Administrative Financial. Uh, I'm sorry. Harley. Oh, sorry. Can I just say one thing? The city cleanup days are next week. I hope we can get these set up the way they were originally designed, where we don't have the whole city street crew shut down. Yeah. I 
think that's weird too. I and I think that's got to come from you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, what do you mean uh, shut down? Yeah. Oh no, the whole you know, it was originally designed for two people to be there, helping people on all of this stuff. But it's come to the point where everybody's there. Is it week long? And the, yeah. the truck drivers don't need to be there until the trucks are full. Right. Uh, so, you know, I don't, I'm, I just think we need to look at that a little closer. Do we have Does Billy manage that? Yes. Do we right. have personnel with a license to handle something? Sure, we do. Yes. I was going to see you. See, we lost one. You can have a CDL yeah, class B. Kurt, right. Kurt and Billy. Kurt and Billy both have class A CDLs. Yeah, I know. What is it? I see Matt. What is it? Matt, uh, we did a position with the state. Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. It was on the water bills last month that went out to everybody. I'll, I'll talk to Billy. Yeah, I, I, just, I thought that was on, too. I mean, we got so many people in there, and it, it, it wasn't rolled up that way. It was the two people that helped load the trucks. Trucks fully called truck drivers in the guy that month. Is it all day, every day? Yes. 8 a.m. And the people get out and help. I mean, yeah, they're very helpful. I'll, I'll talk to Billy and see if we have better options. Okay, thank you. Yeah, thank you. I personally thought that one was on. Oh. Okay. No, you're all, all, you're okay. all right. Okay. All right. Okay. Actually, a couple things here. Uh, we're continuing with budgets this week. Wednesday, is that correct? Yeah. Everybody, Wednesday night at 6 p.m. at City Hall for our continuation with budgets. Uh, appreciate all the guests that have been coming. We've had some outside visitors uh, attending some of those meetings, so that's been a good time had by all. Right. Uh, anyway, uh, continuing, uh, Municipal League Conference is coming up the first week in October, the 8th, 9th, and 10th. I need to know if any of the council members are going to that. Let Debbie or I know about that here in the next week or so. Uh, just an informational item, we've had an application for a use on review permit to put in a radio tower by the church at 309 <coughs> Canton Avenue. Uh, the hearing has been scheduled, the notice is in the paper tomorrow, I guess is when it will hit, and the hearing will be held on September 2nd at 7.30 p.m. Uh, at the Mueller Center as part of our uh, council. council, regular city council meeting. So it's for an FM radio station for the church, it's a 30-foot tower. So just keep that in mind and attend if you wish. That's everything I have to mention to clean up. I was going to mention that. How tall is this tower? 30 foot tower. On the church property. Still healing up from this last time. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I kind of thought the flag was going to be bigger. I think you need to call them. Great. American Legion and let them know. How big do you think that flag is? Well, I'm sure it's pretty fair size. 12 by 18. Is that what it is? I know that's what it says in and the, as you go up in size, that price goes way up per well, flight. It just looks funny. I mean, I can see it from my house. You've got this humongous flag going, this bitty, bitty little flag. We, we need the Perkins flag there or something, don't we? <laughs> Rapids got one just like it, I noticed. Yeah, it's got the same size flag. Uh -huh. It's not the size of the flag that was in the write up, though. Really? No, it's yeah, it was 25 foot in the right. That's what I thought. Because I asked about it because it seemed unusual well, to me. Better go after the price. Well, they're not doing the flag. They were the, weren't they supplying the first flag? No. Yes, they had. Yeah, Verizon supplied the first flag. Yeah. Oh, oh the replacement guy. Yeah, yeah, so I, I <coughs> the Legion will buy the second flag. And if I know Don, it will probably be good. <laughs> Harley mentioned that the legal is going to be in about the FM tower. The legal, the notice for bidders is also going to be in like your trickle filter because that was sent and that would be in the paper tomorrow, so you would probably get bids on that. Uh, I had one question. Your ordinance 1144 that you passed earlier to pass your first reading, do you set a second reading for that then? 
it's at the next meeting. All of the first readings will go to the to the next council meeting. And you passed the first reading of this same ordinance on July 7th. So I'm just wondering. It it required planning and zoning to review it first, so it got stalled and went back to planning and zoning for there. So this is just a rehash of what you did. It, it actually changed. changed from the first. No, it's word for word, word the same. I got both copies in my notebook. I think the footage was different on the rear. I would beg I don't come up next to each other. They look right in. Could be wrong. Where's the city? We're never wrong. It went from 25 <laughs> foot to 10 <laughs> foot. That I have right okay. <laughs> but whatever, as long as, as long as all I know is that it, it, we needed to have it go through planning and zoning before it hit the city council, so we were pretty mature on the first round of it. Okay, thank you. All right, are you done, Harvey? Yes, ma'am. All right, in the interest of time, I will not report on anything. <laughs> and then we will, um, there was a request for an executive session. Motion to go into executive session okay. with a five minute break. Right. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? I like your chicken. Every time I drive out here at night, I stretch my neck to see if it's about. Yeah.